Okay, so subpixeling, anti-aliasing, whichever one you want to call it. Now this is something I'm going to struggle terribly to try and explain, I will admit, but we'll have a go. So this is some animations of the Eevee-lutions, the Eevee-lution sprites. Uh, I did this a couple years ago, I think, 2020. And this is when I was really trying out subpixeling. And I think it's a good example of where subpixeling comes in handy. So let's start there, right? Where is subpixeling handy? Well, from what I've learned, it's predominantly useful for things like idle animations or slow animations where you want to slow things down. You don't want things to be so snappy. You want them to be smoother. And, and that's where this whole subpixeling thing comes in handy. Because the thing is, in pixel art, there's only so slow that you can go, right? So if I open up a new tab here, and we create this white circle. And I want to move it one pixel to the right, okay? I'm trying to create a short movement here. And the thing is, it's a bit too choppy, okay? It's choppier than I like it to be. It's very robotic and it doesn't have any ease. But when there's only one pixel to work with, one pixel of distance to move, it's very difficult to add any ease to that movement, add any smoothness to it. Because in higher resolution work, you've got a much larger circle you're working with a much larger canvas size. And well, if you want to create a very short movement, something like this circle here, where it's just slightly moving to the right, well, you're going to have more than one pixel likely because in higher resolution animation, one pixel is not going to be noticeable at all. It's just, you won't see it, okay? And so a movement like this, of this distance, probably going to be more like 50 pixels, for example, right? Play along. Meaning that's 50 pixels you now have to work with. 50 pixels to smoothen things out. But we don't have that opportunity here, okay? It doesn't work here because we've got one pixel. And so this is where subpixeling comes in because that's our kind of cheat or our way around things. So back to these guys over here. If you notice their movements, they're very subtle. There's not much going on, right? The head's moving up a couple pixels, some of the legs are moving very slightly, same with the tails, it's all very, they're all very minuscule movements, there's nothing really extravagant or extreme about them. But when we're working with pixels of this size, we aren't going to be able to make things smooth the way we normally would. So look here, just pay attention to this leg here. Okay, all it's really doing is going from here to this, to this one here, all right? Here, here. It's not doing much, it's only moving, it's only really doing that. But just to go from this to that, it's quite choppy. It's not as smooth as we'd like it to be. And so what do we do here? In this case, we're taking a color that's between this and the outline, this orange here and this darker outline, which is which ends up as this brownish color. And we're just placing it in this bit here. And that kind of gives this illusion. It's like the outline is moving down, but it's not moving completely down. It's sort of half moving down. And then if we go to the next frame, okay, now it's moved down a bit more fully. However, there's still this pixel, which wouldn't normally be there, right? It would usually look like that as it does on the next frame. But we add in, <laughs> we keep it there because again, we're trying to do half movements, but then eventually we get to the point where, okay, it's normal. Right, we've gotten rid of all the subpixeling and we've successfully gone from this pose or this position to this position, right? It's a one pixel movement, but we've managed to make it a little smoother by using these half pixels, these halfway betweens this color and the outline to give this more blending. I guess you can kind of explain it as blending where we're trying to blend this pixel into this pixel, right? If you just focus on this one here, Right, just focus on this. <laughs> it's going from orange to half orange to black. It's darkening, okay? Rather than going from just orange completely to black, and likewise, rather than this pixel here, from going from existing to not existing, we keep it there. We keep it there for a minute, waiting for this pixel to come down, and then we eventually get rid of it because we're trying to blend things in rather than doing some abrupt sharp movement between the pixels like we see here, right? This is very abrupt because there's no blending. And so subpixeling was something I was really trying to get good at with these ones here. Now, as I warned at the beginning of this video, this is a very difficult thing to explain and demonstrate in a way that makes sense, right? It's kind of something you have to just show and say, 
look at what's going on and hope for the best that you can all just understand what's happening. But yeah, I think blending is generally speaking what you're trying to accomplish. You're trying to go from one coloured pixel to another coloured pixel less abruptly and that's how you create those smoother movements. Those smoother movements when you're trying to do a very small movement. Or at least that's where I found it to be the most useful for. Now if you want to see peak subpixeling, right, peak anti-aliasing, then I'd highly recommend checking this guy out, Danny Aru Art. Um, or if you just want to see good animations in general, good pixel animations in general, this guy is top of his game, I think. But yeah, I think you can see a lot of this sub-pixeling stuff going on in his work. I um, don't know if you can notice the stuff like there. I mean, it's all over the show. I don't know why I'm trying to point at things in my mouse, right? It's here, it's there, it's, it's all over the place. He does a really good job of it, and I think that pays off. I think it really helps make things go smoother. But yeah, that's all as good of an explanation I'm able to provide right now. <laughs> Maybe in the future I'll have this more understood. Maybe I'll have a better understanding, but that's all I can leave with you for now.